In this video, we perform a clean installation of Windows 10, incorporating the Spring 2020 update, once again ahead of its official release. Hello everyone, and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In our last video in this series, we performed an inline upgrade to a single PC, updating it to Windows 10 version 2004, also known as the Spring 2020 update, ahead of its release to the wider public. In this tutorial, we create installation media which can be deployed on multiple PCs, either once again to perform an inline update to an existing system, or to perform an entirely clean installation. If you're watching this video after the official release of the Spring 2020 update, there will be more straightforward ways to create the installation media, and we may well have published a further video with the relevant details. Additionally, if you're looking to update a single PC, you might want to follow our previous video instead, as whilst the instructions in this video can be used to update a single Windows device, the process is more slightly involved, because it additionally offers options to install upon multiple machines, and perform a clean installation where no existing version of Windows is presently installed. Our strategy here is once again to create or log into an existing Windows Insider program account, then download the relevant installation ISO. We will then use the ISO in one of four ways, as either a virtual disk file, used to perform an inline update to the machine upon which the file is stored, a virtual optical disk, serving as the installation media for a clean installation on a virtual machine, an image which can be burned to a physical disk, used to install Windows from an optical disk drive, or an image which can be written to a bootable USB device. We begin by heading to the download page shown on screen now, and linked in the written description accompanying this video. We click the sign in icon in the top right of the screen, taking us to a new sign in window requiring our Microsoft account password. We enter the email address for our Microsoft account, and this will typically be the email address used to sign into Windows. We then click next. We are now invited to enter our password, and once again, this is simply the password we ordinarily use to sign into Windows. We then click sign in. Depending on how recently you've accessed your account, you may be asked to check your security information, and you can opt to update now if necessary, or proceed by clicking looks good. We're making the assumption here that your account is already associated with the Windows Insider program. If not, you may be required to sign up, and you can see how we did this whilst updating a single PC, in the tutorial shown on screen now, and again linked in the description. We arrive at the main page for Windows Insider Preview Downloads, and we can continue scrolling down to reveal key points. The page notes the availability of other Windows 10 Preview Editions, including Enterprise, Education, Home Single Language, and China, although we won't be covering these editions in this tutorial. Should you need a refresher on the membership tiers of the Windows Insider program, the configuration of your own device, or how to change it, our previous tutorial looks at each of these topics in more detail. We click to check the system requirements. Incidentally, should you need to know any aspect of your PC's own specification, check out our tutorial shown on screen now, and linked in the description, which uses tools built into Windows to reveal the details of your hardware setup. In general terms, if you're currently running Windows 10, there's every chance of successfully running the 2004 update. To briefly summarise, your machine will need a 1GHz or greater processor, 1GB of RAM for a 32-bit system, or 2GB for a 64-bit device, 16GB of storage for a 32-bit installation, or 32GB for the 64-bit version, graphics capable of 800x600 output, and an internet connection. Those specifications are an absolute minimum, in particular the storage capacities which will make future updating difficult. Our download will take the form of a single and quite sizeable ISO file, and the next section summarises some of the ways in which it may be used. At its most basic level, the file can be opened and used as a single inline update, although if this is your sole requirement from the project, this could be achieved equally effectively using the Windows Update method shown in our previous tutorial. There are also two options for a clean install. Physically burning to a disk is now an old school method for those nostalgically clinging to their optical drives, whilst writing to a USB device is a more modern take on the same theme. Whatever your preferred method, you'll ultimately need to activate, and this is most straightforwardly achieved by installing on a device previously activated with Windows 10. Any device not previously activated will require an appropriate license for continued use. We now need to select our edition, and the drop down includes the older version 18363, as well as our target version 19041, distributed in fast, slow, and release preview versions. 
We select Windows 10 inside a preview slow, build 19041, effectively matching the build obtained in our previous video. With our chosen version selected, we click confirm, after which our selection is briefly validated. We now choose our product language, and from the usual selection of options, we select English United Kingdom to match our localization. With our language selected, we click confirm, triggering a second validation. We have the option to download either 64 or 32 bit versions, and ultimately we download both, the former for immediate use, and the latter for our archive, in the event that we need it for a future project. We therefore select 64 bit, and downloading commences. At 4.8GB, this isn't a small download, and you should be aware of this if your download speed isn't particularly capable. Once the download is complete, we can see it within our downloads folder, and purely for completeness, here's the 32-bit version which we also downloaded. Clicking a downloaded file mounts it as a virtual disk, assuming our drive letter E. If you're unfamiliar with virtual disks, they operate exactly as you would expect a physical read-only CD or DVD to perform, except the source file is stored on your hard drive, rather than a physical disk in the optical drive. If it's our intention to update the machine on which the virtual disk is mounted, we would simply run the setup app, providing the necessary permissions to user account control, and allowing setup to initialize, before following the steps in the installer to complete the update. We could equally use the downloaded ISO file exactly as it is, as the basis for a virtual machine. And indeed we've created several tutorials on this topic, which are shown on screen now, and linked in the written description accompanying this video. In order to burn our disk image to a physical optical disk, our preference is to use BurnAware Free, a free utility available from the link shown on screen now, and again detailed in the description. In this instance, we would insert a writable DVD into our PC's DVD recorder, and select the Burn ISO option in BurnAware Free, browsing to the location of our ISO file, and selecting the Burn option in the upper left. Of course, burning to disk is becoming increasingly rare in the modern era, and has largely been overtaken by writing to USB. We typically use Rufus for this purpose, and we can obtain it from the link shown on screen now, and linked in the description. We click select, and navigate to the ISO file, selecting it before clicking open. We then insert a suitably sized USB stick, and start the writing process. Using either our burned DVD or USB device, we can now perform either a clean installation, or an inline update on multiple machines. After updating, you may wish to review our suggested post-installation configuration options from our previous tutorial, and be sure to check out our back catalogue and subscribe for future projects. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.